Okay, um, hello everyone and welcome to the October 2021 virtual field trip to cemeteries. My name is Michelle Brocious. I'm your birdwalk leader this evening. I'm also a WCAS board member and field trip co-coordinator. A little bit about this program for those of you who may not have attended before. Every month I select a location for participants to go and visit independently or with a friend or a family member. Uh, they have the whole month from the first until the last day to make a visit or two or three to this location, however many times they want to visit. Um, and then I ask that participants give something to me to share on the, the follow-up call that happens the second Wednesday of the following month. So it's usually bird lists, species lists, journaling and photography. I did receive a poem once. Thank you, Sean. Um, but I, I take these items and I compile them into the presentation that we are going to discuss tonight. And also, I just want to uh, say that tomorrow is Veterans Day. So if you are a veteran, thank you for your service. Okay, there we go. So cemeteries. Uh, cemeteries are a very popular birding destination for many dedicated birders as they provide a green space many times in an urban area and cemetery grounds are quiet as well as cultivated with trees, flowers, and shrubs. These features of cemeteries are sure to attract birds. And I found a fantastic article, The Ins and Outs of Birding with the Dead by Rosemary Mosco, and I just love her. Uh, we had her as a guest speaker once for one of our speaker series, and she authors the Bird and Moon comics. Uh, she wrote a great article about uh, cemetery birding, and I just wanted to list a few uh, tips that she gives for birding etiquette at a cemetery. And this is direct quote, um, know where and when you can visit. Some cemeteries only allow visitors in certain areas and many are locked at night. Others are outright closed to the public or discourage people from birding in large groups. Read the signs and park in designated spots. Don't drive onto the grass. Avoid trampling, bouquets, or otherwise damaging or picking the, the plantings. Give mourners plenty of breathing room. Keep your voice low no matter how stoked you are to have spotted a cerulean. Never touch or lean against a gravestone, mausoleum, or monument. Of course, be mindful of the general rules of ethical birding and photography too. Uh, a lot of those uh, bullet points make sense. They seem kind of a no-brainer to me, but still uh, just good to point out some etiquette when you're birding in cemeteries. Be mindful that people are there to mourn, uh, to visit departed loved ones, and we want to be respectful of them and, um, and respect their space as well. Uh, an example that Rosemary gives in, in this wonderful article that she wrote about, um, it, it, this is an example of ethical birding as well as being disrespectful in the cemetery. It seems that several years ago in Ontario, there were a couple of owls that had taken up residence in a tree in a cemetery and it daily uh, hordes of birders were showing up. They were leaving bird seed on, on the headstones. They were taking sticks and whacking the tree that the owls were in trying to get them to, to move. And that is an example of not only unethical birding practice, but also just being disrespectful in the cemetery. So don't do that uh, when you are observing uh, birds or any other wildlife. You don't want to interfere with their behavior. You don't want to bother them. They have energy that they, precious energy that they need to conserve to be able to carry out their survival practices. And we don't want to interfere with that or make them spend energy that they cannot afford to spend. All right, targets. Oh, and I, I wanted to point out a uh, beautiful photo there of Lakeview Cemetery by Tom Fishburne on the left. All right, target species. We were looking for sparrows. There are old world sparrows of the family Passeridae that are indigenous to Europe, Asia, and Africa, but that have been introduced in the Americas. These species include the house sparrow, which has a wide distribution, and the Eurasian tree sparrow, which has not spread far from where it was introduced in St. Louis. We do not have those here in Northeast Ohio, um, but if I ever go to St. Louis, I might try to find one. 
uh, the New World sparrows of the family Passeralidae include many species, many of which have attractive color patterns and lovely songs. They have short, thick bills for crushing and eating seeds. Most species also eat insects. They are usually brown or gray in color and range from the smaller streaked sparrows to the larger towhees. Juncos are also included in the sparrow family. And I included a, a photo of a chipping sparrow at Erie Street Cemetery on the right. So I'm the first one up. I was I almost didn't put that I only saw seven species, but I did not have good luck <laughs> this month, um, and you'll see why. So I visited three cemeteries. Um, I was out of town for two weekends in October, and then was holding out for really good weather. But finally, I had to venture out to a cemetery on Saturday, October 30th, even though it was another drizzly day. I didn't have a chance to leave home until early afternoon and was therefore not surprised to encounter so little wildlife. My first stop was close to home at Fairview Park Cemetery on Lorraine Road, an old cemetery that claims first burial at 1811. As I walked the grounds, I noticed more recent burials as well. Uh, what I didn't notice was any bird activity other than an unidentified woodpecker and a blue jay, both heard and not seen and may very well have been outside the cemetery. I was there for maybe 30 minutes when I decided to try another location. I made the drive to Riverside Cemetery, a known eBird hotspot, hoping for better luck. However, when I arrived, the rain started coming down even harder, and therefore I resigned myself to driving around to get more familiar with the layout and to note a few spots I would try out when the rain cleared. So I took a picture of the signage at Fairview Park Cemetery because there was really nothing else that presented itself for me to take a picture of. All right, so on October 31st, Halloween, I arrived back at Riverside Cemetery at 9.20 a.m. It was still gloomy and I knew I would have trouble with photography, but this, but this day was my last chance for the virtual field trip. I drove down a hill where I had noted a wooded area the day before. Upon exiting my car, I saw a flurry of activity near the edge of the grove. In all, I counted 15 golden crown kinglets in that section of the cemetery. I also had a surprise sighting of two red-tailed hawks, one seeming to follow or chase the other into the grove. I had only been there half an hour when it started to rain. I quickly checked my weather app and saw the rain was supposed to clear in about 20 minutes, just enough time to get over to Erie Street Cemetery. So that picture of the Golden Crown Kinglet is the only one that turned out, like I said, it was kind of drizzly and rainy and my camera was having a really hard time in the low light and kinglets are very fast. <laughs> so I was surprised I even got this one. All right, so Erie Street Cemetery is located in downtown Cleveland, and as I approached the East 9th Street exit on the Interbelt Bridge, I noticed there was a home Cleveland Browns game scheduled. I had never visited Erie Street Cemetery before, and I admit this is the one cemetery I had in mind when I planned this virtual field trip. I was concerned about the traffic and parking situation, but luckily the game didn't start until 1 p.m., and even luckier, Erie Street Cemetery has a driveway that cuts down the center on which cemetery guests are welcome to drive and park. The rain was just clearing up when I exited my car, though it was still a little overcast, but I heard bird song. I opened the Merlin Bird ID app and recorded the sounds to ID and discovered there was a brown creeper nearby. I scanned the nearby tree trunks without success, but kept the possibility of a brown creeper in the back of my mind. I focused on a handful of golden crown kinglets that were flitting around in the tops of three or four nearby trees, and then I saw it across the driveway, a brown creeper creeping up a lichen-covered trunk. And so there is the picture um, that I got of the brown creeper at Erie Street Cemetery. I moved on from the brown creeper in hopes of finding some sparrows and soon spotted a flock of dark-eyed juncos feeding on the ground. There was a disturbance, a loud city truck driving down a street just outside the cemetery wall and the birds all took flight together. In all, I estimated 40 dark-eyed juncos. This was an underestimate an underestimate, as I know there were a few little brown birds in the mix. Uh, when the birds settled back onto the ground, I also counted 12 white-throated sparrow and one juvenile white-crowned sparrow, though I wouldn't be surprised if there were more white-crowned at the cemetery. I also sighted a chipping sparrow during my visit to Erie Street Cemetery, and I caught a glimpse of the groundhog causing so much trouble to the cemetery grounds, large holes that are even making some of the headstones topple over. And so there on the left is my picture of the juvenile white crown sparrow at Erie Street Cemetery. And I, I love this cemetery. There's a few like, like gnarled looking trees and it just adds a, a very interesting uh, habitat backdrop for the pictures when the birds land on them. 
And so here's a two more pictures of that juvenile white crown sparrow at Erie Street Cemetery. And a white-throated sparrow at Erie Street Cemetery. It found a nice grub on the ground. And then photos of a dark-eyed junco at Erie Street Cemetery. Again, in one of those, those gnarled trees. And here's, a, I think this was all the same, the same junco, just turning around. And I like the picture on the right, how the, the feathers are all fluffed out when the breeze picked up. I always like to see the wispy feathers on the birds. And then here's um, a chipping sparrow on a headstone, a really old headstone at Erie Street Cemetery. And then another dark eyed junko on the left and that groundhog on the right looks really grumpy. He didn't want his picture taken, but he's causing all the trouble. And then finally, a white-throated sparrow at Erie Street Cemetery. And then here's my list. I always highlight in red the target species and, and maybe a few others that I feel are notable. So here, the chipping sparrow, dark-eyed junco, white-throated sparrow, and white crown sparrow all fell within the target species. All right, so Sean had 20 species, and he visited two cemeteries. He says, anyone who knows me knows that I love autumn and everything that comes with it. This includes Halloween, leaves changing color, colder temperatures, and especially horror movies. Despite my love for all these things, cemeteries are not on my list at all, and I have usually avoided them unless I was attending a funeral. However, my love of birding and photography was enough to make a few exceptions this month, and I'm glad I did. My first location was Chestnut Hill Memorial Cemetery and he gives the address there, which is a smaller cemetery located across the street from Bab Run Park. And this location was shown to me by a friend about a year ago, so I knew it would be a perfect starting point for this month. Chestnut Hill has a small pond in the front that supports plenty of waterfowl from the area. Many species of duck and even some swans can be found there. Of the swans, there happens to be two black swans and one of them is fairly aggressive. Thankfully, there is a gate and fencing up so the swan will not directly attack. But if you are on the platform, watch your toes. This swan will put its head through the metal bars and nibble on your toes, feet if you aren't wearing proper footwear. They have put up a beware of swan sign to hopefully limit the amount of injuries to visitors. And I do hope that nobody gets hurt, but I do find that beware of swan sign to be kind of funny. <laughs> All right, uh, from this platform, I was able to observe the black swans, mallards, and wood ducks. I also spotted the resident belted kingfisher that claims this pond as its own. The kingfisher is very smart and has hiding spots that are at the end of the range for my lens or completely hidden within the trees. It, was also, it will also fly to another perch if it sees you moving to a better vantage point. Thankfully, I was able to get a few shots before starting my journey into the cemetery. With this cemetery being smaller, I was able to make a couple of laps in short time. I saw many of the resident birds flying from the woods to the trees within the cemetery and back again. Everything from chickadees and titmice to goldfinch, robins, and crows. I was also lucky enough to find a northern flicker in the mix of birds. Along the way, I also noticed a decoration with a small lantern and a metal blue heron figure. I did not see any headstone or a grave marker nearby to indicate this belonged to anyone, but there was also a small headstone that reads, listen to the wind and I know, and listen to the wind and know I am near, placed next to the metal heron. I felt that was a very fitting decoration and gave this place a warm and heartfelt touch. On my way back to my truck, I did notice a red-tailed hawk perched on a tree near the pond. Unfortunately, it noticed me as well and flew away before I was able to get any pictures of it. And on the left-hand side, beautiful photo of the black swan and ducks at Chestnut Hill Memorial Cemetery by Sean Missig. Here we have two photos of the belted kingfisher at Chestnut Hill Memorial Cemetery by Sean Missig. And then the metal bird statue and headstone on the left and northern flicker on the right at Chestnut Hill Memorial Cemetery.
American Goldfinch on the left and American Robin on the right at Chestnut Hill Memorial Cemetery by Sean. On 1019, I visited my second location, Lakeview Cemetery. Believe it or not, this was my first time ever visiting the cemetery, even though I have lived here most of my life. I met up with a friend of mine who also had not been to this location before, and we both went in blind. This place is huge. I already knew, I already kind of knew that, but never knew the scale of it and picture stories do not do it justice. We made our way along the roadways, looking at graves and headstones that were more than just a headstone. Our first major stop was at the James A. Garfield Memorial. As we were looking at this memorial, I noticed something didn't look quite right at the top. When I looked through my camera, there was a red-tailed hawk sitting at the very top, looking down upon the grass below. Unfortunately, the inside of the memorial was closed during our visit, but we were able to walk around the outside and observe the architecture. So there at the very top of the memorial, the red-tailed hawk um, at Lakeview Cemetery by Sean Missig. As we continued through the winding roads of the cemetery, we saw many birds throughout. The most prominent were Canada geese and blue jays. At one point, there was also a few turkey vultures flying overhead. As we continued to visit all of the popular burial sites, we finally found Alan Freed's jukebox headstone. This was nice to see since my friend and I used to work at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame where Alan Freed's ashes are on display. The jukebox was also close to the pond the ponds and we made our way towards the water. On the walk down there, we saw four swans in one of the ponds. From a distance, they looked beautiful. Once I was in range for a shot, I took it. Then something didn't seem right. I reviewed my shot and I was correct that something wasn't right. These four swans were not swans at all. They were fake. I was a little embarrassed, but this will make for a funny story for years to come. As we started to make our way back towards the entrance, I noticed the Cooper's hawk standing on the ground looking like it had caught something. It started flapping its wings, but when it flew off, there was nothing in its talons. I found another Cooper's hawk, possibly the same hawk, shortly after that sitting on a branch near a headstone. This made for a great picture and was one of my favorites from this trip. And I need to update that photo caption to say Cooper's Hawk, not Turkey Vulture, at Lakeview Cemetery by Sean Missig. And here are two more pictures of the Cooper's Hawk at Lakeview Cemetery by Sean. It's really cool, those ground shots. Well done. All right, there's the turkey vulture on the left and the American robin on the right at Lakeview Cemetery by Sean Missig. And blue jays at Lakeview Cemetery. And there's the fake swans on the left and Canada geese on the right at Lakeview Cemetery. And here's the bird list, notable birds, the black swan, house sparrows and song sparrows, since they are you know, the sparrow family, um, red-tailed hawk and Cooper's hawk. So well done on, it looks like 21 species. And I think I only credited the 20 on the first slide. So I'll make sure I make that update. Uh, photo of a European starling at Lakeview Cemetery by Sean Sig. All right, so Al Rand is up next with 23 species. Al visited a cemetery three times. He says, I visited West Park Cemetery on October 23rd and October 25th. Being so close to a noisy highway, one would think there would be little wildlife at this location, but I was mistaken. In addition to all the birds, there were fox squirrels, gray squirrels, red squirrels, chipmunks, and white-tailed deer. The southern part of the cemetery had the most activity. Those sections have a tree line buffering the cemetery from the highway and is where I had most of my luck both days. Kinglets, sparrow, and juncos were flitting around between the trees and the ground. The open areas were covered with robins. Although unlikely, I was hoping to stumble onto a vagrant varied thrush, but that was wishful thinking. No such luck. However, one sparrow stood out from the rest on 1023. Its coloration was different and it had a full white eye ring as it was getting dark and because the grass was long, I couldn't get a good look, but the field marks made me think it was a Vesper Sparrow. Snapped a few pictures, but none of them turned out. 
Um, and there's a picture of a golden crown kinglet at West Park Cemetery by Al Rand. And he did not count, just so you know, he did not count the Vesper Sparrow in his species count of 23 because he couldn't positively identify it, but perhaps it was. All right, when I returned during the early afternoon at 1025, the grounds were covered in balloons, clear evidence of a nearby balloon release. I can't stress enough how bad balloons are for the environment. Search why balloon releases are bad for the environment online and dozens of articles are available to read. I encourage everyone to read a few of this if, a few if this is something new to you. I picked up and disposed of what I could because it was a rainy day and I didn't plan on getting out of the car. Despite the mess, I noticed some commotion in a tree a few sections over. As I got closer, Cooper's hawk was chasing a young squirrel around. The squirrel outwitted the aggressor and managed to escape. The hawk flew off and landed on a gravestone, presenting a fitting photo op. While on the way out, two American crows landed in the road as I came around a bend. Also very thematic, Poe would have been delighted. So there on the left-hand side, Al took a picture of a balloon at West Park Cemetery. And then here is the Cooper's Hawk at West Park Cemetery. So in the tree and then on um, the headstone there. American Crow on the left and Downy Woodpecker on the right at West Park Cemetery by Al Rand. And there's white-tailed deer on the left and fox squirrel on the right at West Park Cemetery. While day tripping in Erie County on October 27th, I stopped at St. John Cemetery off of Route 250 near Milan, Ohio. It's a small cemetery with less than 20 trees, but it's ringed by tall grasses and agri agricultural fields. A small creek called Sharer Ditch flowed past the front of the yard. I didn't expect much at first, but after watching and listening for a little bit, it was clear that birds were there. Numerous sparrows were in the grasses and shrubs along the ditch. They buried themselves deep and were hard to see, but a few pishes coaxed a few, for, uh, coaxed a few up for me to get a good look. The usual suspects for the date, but I was happy to get some looks. While scoping one of the agriculture fields, I locked onto some turkey vultures circling over a neighboring farm. I counted 17, but I think there were more. Dozens of gulls were circling the area too, but they were so distant I couldn't make out what they were. Agricultural fields are good locations to scan after the harvest because the equipment doesn't get all the grains or crops. These are a good food source for many birds as they prepare for the colder months. Grains also attract rodents, which in turn attract raptors. Hawks, owls, and falcons are regularly seen cruising over open fields or perched up on poles in search of a meal. A lone American kestrel was perched on a nearby wire but didn't actively hunt. So there is a photo of St. John's Cemetery by Al Ram. The highlight of the stop was about a half dozen horn larks. I saw movement in the distance through the scope but couldn't make out any details. I just about I had just about to give up when a few alighted about 50 yards from where I was standing. The yellow throats and black masks became clear. The wind poofed up some of their horns. I was happy to share it with my friend who is not a birder. She was tickled to see something she never knew existed. And so uh, this picture of a field with a horn lark at St. John's Cemetery by Al Rand. And here's his bird list. Notables include Cooper's Hawk, Swainson's Thrush, Chipping Sparrow, Dark-Eyed Junko, White-Crowned, White-Throated, and Song Sparrow. I uh, saw Killdeer, which I thought was kind of cool, the American Kestrel, and the Horned Lark, all great birds. And there's a photo of an old headstone at St. John's Cemetery by Al Rand. Nancy, you're up. Take it away. And if you can't figure out whether you got it, great. All right. Uh, yep, I was able to visit um, several cemeteries and uh, was out four times. And I thought October's choice of, of cemeteries was a good one um, because, again, you, I really don't find cemeteries spooky. Uh, they're quiet places. They can harbor lots of wildlife, as people have already noted. And, um, and yes, you do have to be respectful. While I was out at a couple of the cemeteries, I did see people 
visiting uh, loved ones like in the baby land areas that that made me sad and on a couple of visits there were active um, processions of, of funeral processions going into the cemetery so I walked away so people could have their their peace and quiet because uh, I was able to visit during some of the weekdays and and a lot of these uh, cemeteries are active. Uh, I was able to visit Erie Street Cemetery once, um, West Park Cemetery, uh, and, um, oh shoot, what's the other one? Riverside Cemetery, yeah, once, and then West Park Cemetery a couple times. Um, so the architecture, the headstones, all are really cool to look at. Uh, I'm, I'm not a photographer. So thank you, Michelle, for putting a photograph up of a, of a oh, Elliot Ness, oh, awesome. That must have been at, um, at uh, Lakeview Cemetery. I think that's where he's, he's uh, interred. So I, I kind of stuck more to the east side a little bit, like I say, or west side a little bit, rather than heading to the east side. And, and I uh, joined up with Tom and Mary and Romito on Saturday, October 9th, where we visited Riverside Cemetery. It was really, really a nice day. Uh, and uh, Tom and Mary Ann did have to leave a little earlier. I think they were going to a stuffed cabbage festival or something like that. <laughs> so uh, I stuck, stuck around and probably picked up a couple more species there. Then uh, a little bit later, er, visited Erie Street Cemetery, uh, certainly a lot cooler. And then, um, you know what, I cannot see the rest of that uh, writing there because, again, something it's is too far low. It says, up. Yeah, yeah, I revisited so West Park fall Cemetery. Had come, fall had come. I Fall had come. I revisited West Park Cemetery on Wednesday, October 20th, a little later in the morning and into early afternoon. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. And I visited Riverside Cemetery, as I mentioned. Um, 23 species, not bad for an urban area. So really um, had a lot of the urban birds, the rock pigeons and Canada goose, um, chimney swift, kill deer, turkey vulture, jays, you can see the list there. Uh, I like mockingbirds, so I was really happy to see a mockingbird at Riverside. Um, some of the migrants, uh, golden crown kinglets, um, red breasted nuthatch, junco, chipping sparrow, and yellow rump warbler. And then again, I, I always get surprised by something and a red shouldered hawk circling overhead in an area that is, again, very urban. There's uh, I 490, is uh, not I 490, but the um, uh, I 176 that uh, some. Uh, road is, is not too far away, so you get a lot of uh, road noise, but again, there's just a really good choice of birds. Um, Erie Street and West Park Cemeteries produced 21 and 19 species, respectively. Um, Erie Street is noted for migrants, and, uh, and with the change in the weather, got, we had a cold front move in, so lots of things did move in. I did make the mistake of getting out of my car and walking around Erie Street Cemetery all by myself. And if some of you might have been there, there are a number of homeless people that that live in the air or in the area. And um, so you do have to be really, really careful. And because uh, unfortunately, they many of them have some mental health issues and you just don't know what what uh, what to expect. So but everything was cool. Um, at Erie Street, again, the migrants, Flicker, Ruby, and Golden Crown Kinglets, the Nuthatches, Winter Wren, that was nice, Hermit Thrush, but the Sparrows included Chipping Sparrow. I had my very first Fox Sparrow of the fall there, uh, Junko, White-Throated Sparrow, Lincoln Sparrow, Swamp Sparrow, and among uh, some of the birds that, again, as somebody else mentioned, if, if there was a noise, a lot of the birds flew up into the trees and you could see that there were a lot more that had been in the grass. Um, but a palm warbler, that was nice, a pine warbler and yellow rump. So again, uh, earlier in the in the month, you still get the warblers coming through, but the sparrows were, were really the highlight. 
Next, please. And uh, West Park Cemetery with a larger, with the tree canopy, a little bit larger than some of the other cemeteries, has brushy areas. Uh, the migrants, ruby and golden crown kinglets, the nuthatch, um, winter wren, and of course the sparrows, junco, white throat, and then we had yellow lump warbler. Uh, the second visit to West Park Cemetery was uh, a little bit later in the day. I didn't go in early, as early in the morning, but it was sunny but cool. The number of Canada geese, I don't know if anybody else at, at West Park noticed, there were just oodles of Canada geese there. And there's not any water, so they just must have enjoyed the, the grazing. Um, I, I know I undercounted the geese, but uh, 108 birds was what I counted one time. So it was amazing. Uh, but chipping sparrows and white-throated sparrows were the migrants that I noted along with yellow bump warbler. I did take a picture of this giant puffball. It was one of the three puffballs. This one was the best one because um, it was looking fresh. I put my binoculars next to it so you could get an idea of the size. What I almost decided to do was carve like little holes for eyes and a nose and a and teeth to make it look like a skull coming out of the ground, but I did not do that. So that, I think that would have been disrespectful. Um, let's see, do I have another slide at all? Ah, my species list, but of course. And you can see that there were quite a few uh, sparrows that I had listed and Again, thank you very much for adding the lovely photos. But I had the chipping fox, the junco, white-throated Lincolns, and swamp. So, and, and of course the house sparrow. But then uh, Michelle also highlighted a couple of other unusual things like the red-shouldered hawk, the kinglet. And um, I would have also noted some of the warblers that were still around too. So that was, that, was, that was great fun. And uh, yes, I agree with Rosemary Moscow's list of things about the cemetery. Again, if you, you, know, you see somebody more in, you know, sitting around a, a grave site, you know, just give them, give them a wide berth and um, just respect, just respect the area. Thank you very much, Nancy. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like you had a wonderful um, three visits here, lots of birds, um, very envious of your time. Um, and next up is Tom Fishburn. Uh, Tom, would you like to unmute and, and take it? Okie doke, if you can hear me, I'm ready to go. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, fox sparrow, man, I always had a fox sparrow. And uh, yeah, I, I got the Lakeview Cemetery on uh, October 6th early uh, in the month. And unfortunately I was dying to make a second trip to a different cemetery. But I couldn't find the time. Life is just too short, and I'm running out of time for this world. Eternity is staring at me, so I know I'll be visiting another cemetery someday. Anyway. Lakeview, of course, is a, a remarkable place. And on the website, I read long before University Circle became a destination with many of the cultural institutions that now grace Wade Oval, it was Lakeview Cemetery. I also read that it was designed as a rural retreat for urban dwellers to reconnect with the beauty and healing quality of nature. And yes, it's a beautiful place. And um, I've been there before, but I never took as much time and as I did this time, a couple hours or so. When I got there, I first stopped at Elliot Ness's grave by the somewhat secluded pond where these double-crested cormorants were hanging out. And I walked the nature trail around that pond um, and then headed for the main pond where the Wade Chapel sits, where I also saw those ornamental swans and some Canada geese. And I drove around exploring. Up one hill, I, I, I came across a flock of 150 or so common grackles, mostly on the ground, but they were jumping around. And at another spot near the Rockefeller Garfield Memorial, a few blue jays breaking the ground. Hey, by the way, Nancy, um, I can read the whole thing because at the top right corner of my screen, I found a little toggle thing that says view. And when I clicked, but I didn't originally, but when I 
clicked on that, there's a side-by-side -side gallery option. And that's how I got to read everything, be able to see everything well. So maybe that'll help. So uh, yeah, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, some more, I, I really enjoyed photographing the cormorants there. That was, and there was a little bit of color coming through, but not, not a lot early in October. But um, I was happy when this guy did uh, decide to pose with his wings out like that. That was that was fun. And uh, I always try to get the color in their eye. The, the one on the right, you can see the color in a little bit, but it's a little really too far to, to see the color really well. But a lot of fun photographing the cormorants. Next slide. Uh, more cormorants. And I, I caught the one on the right. Um, flying in and landing. So that was a little action there with some reflections. So I was uh, putting, uh, I probably was working two cameras that day too. The one on the left was a wide angle there. So enjoying, enjoying the cemetery. Next slide. And uh, there were some mallets around, um, particularly in that secluded pond. And then there was a creek that was, um, feeding that secluded pond as well. And I wandered up there a bit and there was some things going on there. But the um, only thing I could actually photograph was this Robin. So he kind of was in a neat little position there in the, in the water. Um, that was fun enough. Next slide. Yeah, there's some of the grackle, a couple of the grackles. They were, they went up the hill and I was happy I got some color. A lot of times with grackles, I just, the color doesn't come through. And uh, this time I was able to get some color. So I was happy with uh, with that. And uh, not quite the crow, maybe not quite um, uh, what Poe would consider good, but um, uh, grackles are a good second choice, I think, for a cemetery on, on uh, tombstones. So let's see what else we got. And the blue jays. Yeah, there were a couple of blue jays here and there. And um, it was more up towards uh, the Rockefeller Memorial and near Garfield, somewhere in there, I remember. But, so um, enjoy blue jays when I didn't have some good light on. It was a nice light day. It was a pleasant day when I was there, that's for sure. Next slide. And memorials, yep. You can't ignore the memorials that, that are there. And uh, I've heard about the, the, the Hazarada Angel uh, before on the right there, but I never got to visit it uh, until this time. And uh, it's a, a spot that it's actually on Google's map, uh, Google, yeah, Google Maps as a spot. That's how I found Elliot Ness's grave too. Um, Elliot. I think my age might show, but Elliot Ness and the Untouchables, you know, was uh, a show I used to watch as a kid. But uh, Hazarots, I didn't know anything about until I read a little bit about them after uh, after visiting their memorial. Uh, next slide. Uh -huh. So the Rockefeller was there, and I got the Garfield, a different angle of the Garfield there. And uh, which was fun. And yeah, at Elliot Ness's grave, somebody decided to enhance the uh, memorial with the uh, Great Lakes Elliot Ness Amber Lager bottle, and which I thought was appropriate and cool. So I took a picture of it. Even though I don't, I don't, I never, I never acquired a taste for beer. I'm missing out. I got to tell you. Anyway. Okay, next slide. There you go. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tom, for sharing those gorgeous photos and your experience. Um, and I, I want to say thank you to everyone, to Sean Missig, Al Rand, Nancy Howell, and Tom Fishburn 
for participating and going out and visiting uh, different cemeteries in the area. And a huge thank you to the government and private organizations that maintain our cemeteries. And we mean government and private, that's a catch all. If there's another entity I'm missing, thank you. Thanks to anyone who maintains our local cemeteries. I just wanted to list there um, the suggested cemeteries for this virtual field trip. There were a few others that were also visited, but I had suggested the Lakeview Cemetery, West Park and Riverside and Erie Street, which were all visited. And then nobody made it out to Highland Park Cemetery. That's one that I have visited in the past. Last winter, when the red poles um, came down, they were at Highland Park Cemetery. So I went and saw them there and, and had a good experience. So I, I threw that cemetery in as well. Um, all of these are birding hotspots in eBird. So if you watch this program and are inspired to go check out your cemetery, I recommend um, one of these five. Please also visit wcautobahn.org. Uh, for more virtual field trip opportunities. This month, the month of November, we are visiting Chagrin River Park um, in search of wild turkey, and I believe it is the white-throated sparrow, I believe. So, but wild turkey is the big one since it is, you know, the month of Thanksgiving. All right, and so with that, I would like to open up this program for comments and discussion. So does anyone have any questions or comments? If you have trouble unmuting, send me a chat and I'll, I'll help with that. Or if you would prefer to chat, I can read your chat. Yeah. Tom, did you have a list of birds that you had seen? Uh, no, not really. I don't usually make a list. Um, but um, any particular reason why you ask them? No, because I, I, I just like to see lists, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I, I used to keep track, but not anymore. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything I saw that I didn't get to, to photograph, but I can't remember offhand. But um, I, I was dying to go to another cemetery, I tell you. <laughs> I, um, so, so, um, I now recognize Chestnut Hill, Sean. Um, I've been there several years ago. I've seen those black swans. Anyway, I ran, I, I ran into that uh, several years ago. That's a fun place. And, uh, but yeah, Erie, Erie I really was enjoy that little place. Place. Oh, I can believe it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Erie, Erie was the the place that I I figured you know I, I would get to as a second one if I could make it, but I just didn't make it. I think we ought to follow Nancy around. I tell you, she she just gets everything at the right time. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I'd be happy to have somebody come out with me. Yeah, I uh, another cemetery that is really big is Calvary Cemetery. It's kind of on the border. Of, I think it's in Cleveland, Garfield Heights border, and um, I. I think they yeah, regularly see Merlins out there, mm. usually yeah, in the fall yeah. and winter. I've never really birded out there though, but I bet I bet it could be good. I bet it's big. I think Michelle, um, I got a feeling. You're very happy with the progress you're making with your photography. I I am. I'm enjoying it more and more. Um, I'm having I, I I'm happy with the progress, but then I think the more I progress, the more I realize my limitations. <laughs> um, especially like just these these overcast, dismal days. Uh, I, it's a constant battle with ISO. I'm still really learning how to balance my exposure and, and try and get the best picture with the light I have to work with. So I, I need more practice there. Um, and I also am hoping to upgrade my camera soon. But I guess yeah. I, really, I really have a lot to learn well. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm still learning. Yeah. I'm trying, trying to do some things different with depending on the light that's available. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing I kept putting off 
going on, on my virtual field trip, because I'm like, oh, it's, it's not a sunny day. I'd really like to have some sun. So I'm going to be taking pictures. And so I just kept putting it off and until it's finally the last weekend of October. And I'm like, well, I gotta go. <laughs> I can't wait any longer. Um, that I still, I was very happy that at Erie street cemetery on Halloween day that the sun came out a little later in the morning. And I, I was able to get some pictures, um, that I was happy with. Yeah, was that, did Michelle, you say that, that was a Cleveland Browns game going on that day? Yes, yeah, yeah, I was driving in and I saw the sign and I had no idea, like, because I'm just, I didn't even think to check. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> when is this game? Am I going to hit traffic? And and I had no idea where I was even going to park for Erie Street Cemetery. I was kind of planning to park on a street. And I'm like, if there's a Browns game, like, there's going to be no parking anywhere. And I don't want to pay you know, I know gobs of money for a parking lot. Uh, but luckily when I, when I got there, I was like, oh, there's a driveway. And then it, I saw like signs in there. I'm like, I think I can pull in. And I pulled in and luckily you are allowed to, to drive and park there if you're a cemetery guest, but there is a big sign saying only if you're a cemetery guest and cops drove through several times. So they must really monitor that on game days which was, which was really good to see. So I was the only car there. There was another car that came and parked and, you know, people kind of, I, I don't know what they were. They, they, they didn't seem to be visiting a grave, but they kind of talked and then left. So they were just maybe using an opportunity to have a quiet space to have a conversation. I don't know, but um, it was, it was a, a good morning for that. Like I didn't have any trouble with traffic. But like I was there in the morning and the game wasn't until one. So that might have something to do with it too. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. And then most of the action takes place closer to the, the other side. stadium. Yeah. Although people will park, you know, further away and then walk down. Um, you just don't want to be there after the Browns game, after a <laughs> loss. Then oh. it's like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. People are all grumpy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I got out of there. Um, before the game even started. So I was good. But yeah, that's the thing. If you're going to go down and it was, I, I wasn't even planning on going. I, like I said, Erie street cemetery was the one cemetery I did have in mind that I've always, and I used to work downtown and I was like, well, that's, that looks like such a cool cemetery. And I never, cause I worked further, you know, towards the, um, the public square and Erie, you know, that's, it's a walk to the cemetery, but I would drive past it to go to my parking garage. I never visited it, so I, I wanted to get out there, um, but I just didn't know if I had the time. So I was at Riverside, and then when it started to rain, and I knew I had to wait 20 minutes, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to use that 20 minutes just to drive on over. I'm going to get there, but I should have, yeah, and I'm glad I didn't check, because if I had seen there was a game, I might not have gone, <laughs> and it turned out it worked out, so I'm, I'm glad I went. It's spooky for a couple of reasons, I think, that place, you know, but uh, we'll just go there often, you know, and uh, I mean, I've never had any problems. I, you know, I'll, I'll get out of the car and walk around. Yeah, I did too. Um, like I said, there, there, were, there were police that went through several times. I didn't happen to see any homeless people. It was a morning. It was a game day. Maybe just, I don't know, but I didn't have any problems with anybody. Um, the big thing was just, it was kind of spooky looking because it is older and you've got those gnarly looking trees and those heads, the, the old headstones, some of them are toppled over. So it did kind of look like a spooky cemetery, um, but it was morning and the sun had come out. So it wasn't, it wasn't too bad, but I did feel, I'm like, okay, I'm going and visiting cemeteries on Halloween and I'm not really there to visit anybody in particular. <laughs> so I was like, how does this look? I don't know. I felt kind of weird about it, but it was my, I waited till the last minute waiting for good weather. When I was at Lakeview, I actually saw some people um, that were dressed up in, I, I don't want to say full costume, but, but definitely, you know, like had some capes and stuff on and they were <laughs> around the Hazarot Angel and they were all about that and took a whole bunch of pictures like they had their own photo shoot at that place and that's kind of cool yeah. 
Yeah. Was that on? Yeah. You didn't, did you go on Halloween or was it just close to the date? No, I, I, I didn't go on Halloween. Okay. Um, Halloween weekend, I ended up being busy, so mm. I didn't go anywhere. I actually planned to make it to the uh, um, graveyard where uh, my grandparents are buried, and I didn't even make it to there, so. Okay. Yeah, that's the one thing that I, I kind of thought might happen with this, is that we would all choose to go to a cemetery that was special to us. Maybe we had someone there, and we, no one did that. Um, I, myself, have never been a, a grave visitor. Like I have, you know, grandparents and I've never been back. Um, they're buried on the east side. I don't even remember the name of the cemetery. I know where it is. <laughs> um, I could get there if I wanted to, but, and, and I have a cousin buried there as well, but I, you know, I just, I've never, I don't do that. That's just not my thing. Same here. All right, any other um, comments, questions, insights? I do want to say that uh, I've made it out to Chagrin River Park twice. Uh, okay. I'm going third time this weekend because I absolutely love that place. It's Excellent. seriously one of my favorites. Um, and ironically enough, the first bird that I saw and took a photo of the first time I was there was a white-throated sparrow. So that one's already covered great um, and I've seen I've seen a bunch of them there however no turkeys yet no turkeys so hopefully, hopefully they move their way in okay yeah they're supposed to be there so you better you better get on it um if if any of you do happen to see and get a picture of a wild turkey I believe that is our photo of the month contest um, so if you have a picture that you get and you're proud of it, um, go ahead and go to our website, wcaudubon.org. And it's a fundraiser. I think it costs like $5 or something, right? Right, five, yeah, $5 to submit your photo. Uh, but you could potentially win something amazing. I think it might be, what is it, Nancy? What's the prize? I don't know what the grand prize is of all the people. I thought it was who... like a subscription to... Um, Birders, was it Birders Digest? It may very well be. I, like I don't. Okay. See, it was I'm a not prize. a photographer. I don't know. How, yeah. I, I'm, I'm totally amazed at people that can bird and take photographs. My gosh, I can barely walk and kick and bird at this time. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of great, deep, a lot of great photos that I see. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I don't participate in the photo of the month because I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to because I'm a board member. I don't think winning a prize is it would be good. <laughs> so I don't do it. Um, and you know, so but yeah, if if you all happen to this month or if you have it doesn't have to be taken this month, it could be a previous picture that you have that you that you've gotten another time uh, that you want to submit. Um, go ahead and, and do that. Thank you. All right. Any any other comments before we end the call? I just wanted to ask Sean, which entrance to Chagrin River Park did you go in? The one that's close to the freeway there? Yes, I, I always enter um, off of Reeves Road there and okay. park in the main lot okay. and then usually go through uh, all three of the trail sections, the, the left, the middle, and the right. Uh, the last time I was there, I actually took the big loop that runs along the river and then circles back towards the other entrance on the other side from Reeves Road. Yeah, as far as the turkeys, I've seen them more in the neighboring yards than on the property, mm -hmm. but that was in the spring. So I don't know. Uh, okay. Yeah, so right on Reeves One Road. Time yeah, one time I did see them um, in the little marshy wetland area that's kind of tucked behind where the uh, sledding hill and um, the fire pit are at, kind of behind there. And I've seen a flock of them back there before, but only once. All right. Well, it makes me glad that I, I picked the white-throated sparrow, too. So we'll at least get one of the targets there. Um, and they have, you know, the rest of the month, it's, it's still just, you know, it's only the second week of the month. So 
Um, good luck everyone who's going and finding the wild turkey and the white-throated sparrow. And of course, there are probably many other amazing birds there to be seen. And thank you everyone for joining me this evening. Have a, um, a lovely November and a very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.